All right. New units, new day. Thursday, 11th, November 10th. For those watching at home, re-watching if you've already been set it through it in class. Sequences and series. Um, first, let's talk about what these two words mean, because people get them backwards. The good news is, you, if you get them confused, you'll probably still be OK because of the context of the problem. So uh, we're never going to ask you to differentiate between the two. But just so we know, a sequence is just a list of numbers <coughs> in some pattern. So a list of numbers. But the numbers have a pattern to them. And a lot of time, it'll be our job to figure out what the pattern is. A list of numbers in some kind of pattern. That's what a sequence is. A1, comma, A2, comma, A3, comma, A4, all the way up to AN. AN would be the, the last term. In fact, if there's a last term, we say that's a finite sequence. Because it ends. As opposed to what would be the opposite of finite. Infinite. Yeah, infinite. A1, A2, A3, A4, dot, 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 forever and ever. It doesn't end. It's an infinite series. Excuse me, an infinite sequence. Uh, the little number is called the index. And usually uh, it's, it's abbreviated with n. Or we could use n. Uh, normally we start with 1 or with index of 1. But if you start with one, it makes counting the terms easy, easy because that's how you would count the terms. But you don't have to start with one, uh, especially computer science people sometimes start with zero for a variety of reasons. But we'll usually start with one. Um, the trickier ones are the ones that don't start with one. So we're going to talk a lot about sequences today. Um, just so you know, this is what's coming up, series is a sum of numbers in some pattern. So the sequence is the list, the series is the sum. Only a couple years ago I figured out how to keep these straight in my mind because you know we hit this once a year and sequence series they don't really give away you know, the words themselves, I don't think, lend themselves to knowing that one's a list and one's a sum. Um, how I remember it is, you've got to have the list before you can add them up. And alphabetically, sequence comes before series. So that's how I remember that the sequence is the first thing you get. That's just the list. And then if you want to add them up, the sum, that's the series. So today we'll just be talking about sequences, the patterns. Tomorrow and the next day, we'll be talking about adding them up and the formulas that go with that. Um, today, there's going to be like two ways to classify the, uh, the types of series. So there's, we're going to have two Roman numerals, and they're both types. I need a better, I need a better word, but I don't know. Uh, I guess types of formulas would, no, they're both types of formulas. The first type is a recursive formula. Recursive formula. And a recursive formula uses previous terms 
to get the new term. The recursive formula uses previous terms to get the new term. Here's an example. Um, the Fibonacci sequence Have you heard of that before? A few yeses, a few noes. One, one. Actually, if you remember one, one, that's how it starts. <coughs> and basically, you add the previous two terms to get to the next term. So one plus one is two. But then one plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. Five plus eight is 13 and on and on you go. So how you would write that term is you, you have to be spotted the first two terms. A1 is 1, A2 is 1, <coughs> but for n greater than or equal to 3, meaning third term or more, the nth term a sub n as long as n is 3 or 4 or 5 is add the previous two terms <coughs> so a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 So a sub n minus 1 would be the previous term. n minus 2 would be like two terms back. So an example for you to try. Let's find the first four terms. If a sub 1 equals negative 3 and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 <coughs> plus 7. So a1 is negative 3. They gave us that. a2 how am I going to get a2? I had 7 to the last term. In fact, that's a good way to sort of read that to know how to work it is add 7 to previous term. So it's good to kind of interpret the formula and then you know what to do. So take the previous term and add 7 to it. So negative 3 plus 7 would be 4. 4 plus 7 would be 11. And 11 plus 7 would be 18. And so on, but it only asks for the first four, so we'll stop there. We, recursive formulas, in one sense, they're easy to deal with because they're usually simple formulas and you're just doing something to get to the next. But in another sense, we don't like them because if I ask you for, let's say we wanted to find the 35th term, what would you need to get the 35th term? First the first 34 terms. So there's no way to jump to a, 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 any term that we want. You always have to build up to the term that you want. So that's kind of annoying. And so we're not going to do that. I don't. It's like, wow, well, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. There's got to be a better way. Well, the better way, or a different way, and cer certainly a better way if you want to find the 35th term, rather than going through the first 34 terms, is called an explicit formula. An explicit formula. does not rely 
on preceding terms. You can jump to any term you like. Oops, you can see it. Explicit formula does not rely on preceding terms. Uh, recursive sort of means looking back. Like recursive, you got to look back to get to the next one. Explicit, I can explicitly find the 35th term without needing the first 34 terms. Some examples. A sub n equals n over 3 plus n. So I'm going to plug in n equals 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and see what I get. So I, I don't have to look backwards. I'm just going to plug in n equals 1, and I get 1 over 4. I plug in n equals 2, I get 2 over 5. I plug in n equals 3, I get 3 over 6. 4 over 7. And a lot of times, once you write some of the terms, you can sort of see the pattern developing here. But the point is, for an explicit formula, you can jump to any any term you like. In fact, just to prove it, I guess, let's find the 35th term. <coughs> so I'll plug in 35. 3 plus 35 is 38. So you don't need the previous 34. You can, you can jump straight to any term that you like. Do one that's a little bit harder here. Negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. So if I plug in 1, see how much work I want to show here. If I plug in 1, I get negative 1 to the, thank you, negative 1 squared, which should be 1 over 1. I should simplify that, but I'm not going to for now. If I plug in 2, what does the top, what does the numerator become if I plug in 2 for n? Negative 1, because it's negative 1 cubed becomes negative 1. And then the bottom is just 2. So the denominator is easy. The denominator is whatever n is. If I plug in 3 to the top, negative 1 to the fourth is positive 1, fourth term, 4 in the denominator, and then negative 1 to the fifth would be negative 1. <coughs> this type of thing we'll see often, negative 1 to a power. What Can you look already and see what effect that has on our terms? Yeah, it makes the signs alternate. It alternates the signs. <coughs> By the way, we could still plug in 35 and it wouldn't be bad. Because negative 1 to the 36 would be a positive 1 over 35. Jump to any term we like. Okay, so explicit, if we're working with a one, we generally like explicit better, and most of the ones we deal with um, will be explicit, because they're just, you can jump to any term you like. Recursive, you constantly have to build up to find what you, what you need. Okay, a little side note here for something we use in, the, in this unit is factorials. Do you know what a factorial is? One yes, lots of no's. It's with the exclamation point is how you indicate that's what you're going to do. So it's not when you read that it's not in, right? It's not a, it's not that kind of exclamation point. It means, or you you say it as in factorial. 
and it's probably best described as um, I like multiplying down so let's look at 7 factorial 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that would be a really big number I don't know what that would be I guess I didn't really need to put the times 1 on there 5040 Um, by definition, meaning that this, this, these don't really make sense, well, this one I think does. One factorial. What do you think one factorial is? One, because you multiply down from one, but you're starting at one, so you just get one. What's a little bit trickier is zero factorial. Because it's like, well, you, don't, you can't start at zero and get to one. So by definition, zero factorial is one. That's weird, but it makes it makes lots of math things work out, makes formulas work better later if zero factorial is just defined to be one. So I don't know that that makes much sense, except that in formulas later, it's nice. All right. So two types of fact, two types of sequences are recursive and explicit. But there's another way to sort of classify sequences. I need to find a word, otherwise my just two types both times. <coughs> arithmetic. An arithmetic sequence, you add or subtract. the same number to get to the next term. Add or subtract the same number to get to the next term. Maybe just an example. This is just like pattern recognition. You would, you could do these, some of these problems today, uh, you could do without any notes at all. Like, you wouldn't know the official words for what you were doing, but maybe I should have just started with that. Like, I assume everybody could have, could fill in those three blanks just fine. So I'm going to assume you know 21 goes there. How'd you get that? How'd you know that? Uh, you add three each time. And if you add three each time, that's what that's what makes it an arithmetic sequence. In fact, that difference is called the common difference because the difference from one term to the next, at least in this sequence, is three. So these are these are usually easy to recognize. That one was really easy. Let's do one that's maybe a little bit harder. I mean, there's only so hard you can make them when all you're doing is adding, subtracting, and getting to the next term. 13, 8, 3, negative 2, negative 7, and then I'll let you fill in from there. It's supposed to be the easiest three popsicle sticks of the year right here. No pressure. So, Toby, what's the next term? Negative 12. Jake, what's the next term after that? Um, yep. <coughs> and Cole, what's our last term? Negative yeah, negative 22. And what's the common difference? <coughs> well, be careful. Let's say it's negative 5 because we're decreasing. So the common difference is negative 5. So if you add or subtract the same number, that's called arithmetic. The second type we'll look at is geometric.
you know what? It's back to arithmetic comma here. I would just say you add d each time. And d, if d is negative, then you're subtracting. But it's easiest to think that arithmetic goes with add. And sometimes you're adding a negative number. Sometimes you're adding a positive number. But you're always adding something to get to the next term. For geometric, care to guess what you do to get to the next term? Multiply. Multiply by R. So it has a different letter, but that's because you're not adding and subtracting. You're multiplying. Multiply by R to get the next term. So let's say we have 2, 6, 18. These numbers get kind of big, kind of quick with multiplying. So what goes in that next blank? Or how do you know what goes in the blank? Why don't you just tell me what the operation is and I'll do the math. That's the, yeah, 18 times 3. We're, we're times in 3 each time. So that's our common ratio. So 18 times 3 is 54. <coughs> and 54 times 3 would be 50 times 3 plus 4 times 3, so 162. So some of these can get kind of big kind of quick when you're multiplying. See if you can find the next three terms of that one. 400, negative 200, 100. A little bit trickier, but probably not for Derek, Evan, and Luke. Ooh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, well, you, you, you're going last, Luke, so maybe by the time we get to you, you'll see what the... Okay. Maybe we should have figured out what R is. Derek, what's R? Uh, so we're multiplying by negative one-half, or dividing by negative two, either way. So Derek, what goes in the next blank? Uh, negative 50. Evan, what goes in the next blank? Good. Luke, got the pattern now? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, if you don't know what 25 divided by 2 is, except not, it should be negative. It should be negative. Those are all signs. So r is negative 1 half. Um, and just so we're clear, there's also there's also types that are neither. So there's not a there's not a definition for neither other than it's not arithmetic. It's not geometric. Um, an easy example that maybe you would recognize what the, what's going on here. One, four, nine, sixteen. I'm not adding the same thing, right? The common difference. Of, well, it wouldn't be a common. The difference is three, five, seven. So it's not that. The multiplier would be. 4 and then, I don't know, not 4. So it's not arithmetic, it's not geometric. But do you recognize what those numbers are? They're squares. So what goes in the next blank? 36, 49, 64. So it's a pattern, so it's a sequence, but it's not arithmetic or geometric. And so sometimes people get freaked out most about those because they're stuck trying to figure out if it's A or G, and really the answer is it's neither one, even though you can see what the pattern is. All right, today's assignment is worksheet one, which I will pass out right now.